world, this very gray world, and somehow it's typified to a single drawing. And uh, I would really enjoy that challenge. But it may be also a subject that you cover over a period of time. During the financial breakdown last, uh, you know, in, in 2008, I did a whole series of cartoons over a course of many weeks, of which each one told a little part of the story. But when you weave them together, it makes like a paragraph, it makes like a chapter, it makes like a book. Projector here uh, in the corner of the room. I don't know if you can uh, see me or not, but I'm wondering, you know, we have a lot of financial, uh, you know, industry people here, various executives, uh, investors, hedge fund operators, uh, speculators, etc. What would you say about uh, creating this game actually as a commercial product and putting it out there on the market? Seems like a great educational yeah. a tool, but also the, you know, the road to heartbreak for many people. How, what about you know, that? I'd I, love to have a I copy of it. I would love you know, for them to get in contact with me because I really do think that um, you know, the cartoons have an enormous, enormous potential on the educational side. Uh, we all know when we see a, a long article uh, written about anything that's complex and if there's a, a, a photograph or picture next to it, you go to the picture photograph first. And sometimes that is what I remember first if I have to cogitate about the subject matter. Then you add the element where the cartoon not only is something that resides in a different part of the brain, but it also has a story or a lesson involved. Then it becomes a very potent and powerful you know, parcel of uh, personality. So I'm a great advocate for the, uh, the, the learning and educational uh, ability of cartoons. And, and so I, I would lo I'd love to, to talk to people about it. Um, if I can just ask you, do you think because you, you draw and it's the more visual representation that you can be, do you think you can be perhaps a little more cynical, maybe a little more irreverent than perhaps you know, a journalist who's going to actually write all the words. You can, uh, it's a lot of reading yeah. between the lines that uh, you leave it up to people. You know, that, you know, the drawings can go places where the written word cannot. Of course, it can go in places. We are familiar with what happened in Denmark with the cartoons about uh, Prophet Muhammad. And they're very powerful mediums because they, reside, they, they tickle it, like I said, a different part of the brain. And there's a sort of a sense of subtlety that, that can be uh, uh, harnessed um, if it's done well. So, again, with the financial thing, I think that, um, yeah, I think people, when they see a cartoon, they're, 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 they're preparing themselves for a laugh. And, uh, you know, the cartoons themselves um, can be kind of complex, even though you do digest them in very, just in a few seconds. We have one more question in the back over there. And I think that'll be the final question then. Uh, these guys want to go to the bar right now. <laughs> They've had a long day here. We've had a tremendous bet, audience, but yeah. we're so thrilled you waited for us. Hi, my name is Cookie. I just want to ask if you would have to draw something predicting, let's say, six years from now or 11 years, what would you draw? Uh, you'll have to repeat. I couldn't quite hear that. The question if you would have to draw something predicting the future in six years or 10 years or 15 years, what would you draw? It was about predicting the future. What was the rest of it? Could you what, what would you actually it? draw? If you looked into your crystal ball today, five, six ah. years, ten years down the road, what do you think is the representation we're going to see? Oh, this is that, you know, that's such a great question. I love, the, I love those type of questions. <laughs> where uh, it, well, The first thing that I'll, that I'll say is, um, it is so amazing, uh, the technologies and things that we have apparent right now that we didn't have five, six years ago. You know, Facebook is a good example and, and other things changing rapidly. I, I fully expect that in the same way that you and I are talking in this amazing manner from my, you know, my drawing table here in Baltimore to a conference in Belgium, that all sorts of communication and technologies will advance uh, and make, you know, hopefully the exchange of good ideas easier. Um, and not hasten decline faster when things go wrong. But I think that for um, what I look at is the way to communicate, I hope, um, you know, satire and positive information. People are always worried that journalism is on the decline now, where in newspapers and, um, and, and sources of, of income for high journalism seem to be um, shrinking. I would like to think that that trend is going to turn around uh, and that we will uh, hopefully be able to avoid further economic problems 
because of high journalism and the ability to spread good and smart information um, readily and easily. Gal, I think we have to wrap it up over here. Thank you very much for being available, and thank you also for all these uh, cartoons. We're going to uh, take another good look at them, and we'll enjoy a drink in the meantime. And I Terrific. wish you a very good day, and we'll look forward to your future cartoons in The Economist. Thanks a lot. Nice to thank see you. you guys. Have fun. Thanks Bye. a million. Bye. Bye.